Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Church of the Brazos Valley. My name is Katie Womack and I am your worship assistant today. I come to this church because it has been my spiritual home for 38 years. And while I've missed a few Sundays this summer and last spring, it is truly good to be back home with you today. We are a welcoming congregation, which means we celebrate and welcome all people of any sexual orientation, race, age, gender identity, ability, or belief. So whoever you are, wherever you've come from, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Honoring the value of spiritual freedom and diversity, we have no statement of doctrine. As a covenanted community, we search for truth and how it applies to ethical living. Unitarian Universalism is a faith of covenant, not creed. So we welcome our visitors today. We are so glad you're with us today and we encourage you to come to several services. We also encourage everyone to visit our website, that's at brazos-uu.org, and our Facebook page to keep up with what's happening. Contact our administrator, whose uh, link you'll see in the chat box now, to receive our monthly newsletter and our weekly ecast. On the website, you can sign up to become a digital member of our community. Likewise, if you'd like more information, or if you're interested in joining our church, please contact our minister, Reverend Christian Schmidt, by email, which you will also see in the chat box now. Speaking of Christian, today is our first service with him as our minister, and we're so excited, excited to have him with us. Reverend Christian is our interim minister for this year. He was also an active member of this church from 2006 through 2009. Since then, he has attended seminary, has been ordained, and served churches in Massachusetts, New Jersey, and California. He's now living in Maryland, where his wife serves a church, and he will be serving us remotely this year. His sermon today is titled, Welcome Back, We're in a Pandemic. Thank you, Katie, and welcome everybody. Uh, so we're gonna sing, and uh, singing online is a little different. So what I need you to do, I want you to sing with me, but stay muted because the more of us that join in and and stay muted, the more we can sing at home, and we won't be hearing the echoes. So this is inner rejoice and come in. You guys know this one, and there's no better way to get a UU church service started. So here we go, inner rejoice and come in. Number three sixty one in the hymnal, if you're following along. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Open your ears to the song. Open your ears to the song. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. All right, open your hearts, everyone. Here we go. Open your hearts, everyone. Open your hearts, everyone. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Hello, everyone. It's so good to be with you. Uh, now for our call to worship this morning. Friends, welcome to this special gathering as we join together in both time and commitment, even as each of us is in different physical spaces. We come together to share our joys and hold our sorrows, to learn and to be transformed so that we might go out into the world, either physically or virtually, to change it for the better. So let us embrace this time apart from our normal time in the week, this time we have together 
this time to be with one another in love and support. Let us worship. Thank you, Christian. I invite you to light your own chalice if you have one with me as I light our chalice today. Please say our chalice lighting words with me. We light the chalice, the symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith, as a beacon of hope for all who seek justice, dignity, and compassion, and in celebration of the life of truth and meaning we share together. And now join me in affirming the mission of our church. Love is the spirit of this church and service is its gift. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek truth in love, and to help one another. Thank you, Katie. So each week we have a time for all ages in which we share a message for everyone. And this week I wanted to introduce myself to all of you. Um, some of you know me from a decade or so ago. Um, and a lot has changed since then. I married, we have four kids. So um, even if you knew me 10 years ago, there's a lot to learn. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about my role here and my, my past too, and just to introduce myself. Um, and so one way to do that is um, I wanted to show you my stole today. Um, a lot of ministers wear these stoles. It's one of the symbols of ordained ministry. Um, and this one is a very special one I was given on my ordination. And part of the special part of it is uh, on one side, um, it's very beautiful and it has a lovely chalice, which I think you can see right there. My mother made this, um, but it's actually the backside of it that I like even better um, because the backside is made up of lots of pieces of t-shirts from my life. Um, so one of the first ones, I guess it's upside down. Hold on, let me, let me get it right, right side up here is a Noah's Ark t-shirt that was one of my very favorites when I was a child. And one of them is a piece of the uh, shirt I was taken home from the hospital in, a special delivery at Brackenridge Hospital. Another is I'm a Brookside baby where I went to daycare a long time ago. Austin High School was not my high school, but it's where I went to the Child Development Center, which was sort of a, a special daycare run by the uh, public schools at the time. And so on down, we can talk about Austin Children's Choir, where I was a really active member for years as a child and youth. And of course, I was active in the choir at UUCBV for um, several years too, and loved it. And it was an important part of um, the church experience for me. And keep on going all the way down. This is from my high school, LBJ, and from my junior high, even further down. All sorts of wonderful things. I went to the University of Houston, where I was one of the Bleacher Creatures, which is sort of a uh, sports fans group there. Um, and all of this, all the way down to some of the seminaries I went to. I went to two seminaries, Andover Newton, which is there. And on the other side, Austin Presbyterian Theological Seminary in Austin, Texas, or Kaliska, who I see here, and I had lunch a couple times that year while I was there. So that shirt, um, those shirts are just a tiny piece of who I am and a tiny piece of some of the organizations I've been involved with, but it's, it's such a valuable piece for me to carry that with me, to think about all the, the things that brought me to this time and space in my life all the different schools and organizations and all the people I've met. And to think that, you know, I didn't come here fully formed um, out of nothing, you know, that it was all those experiences that have brought me to this time and place. And I think a lot of that, a lot of that in the context of church too, that we're part of an organization that's now 64 years old in the Church of the Brazos Valley and part of a association that's hundreds of years of old, a Unitarian Universalist Association with roots that go even further back than that. We have to think about the context of where we've been and where we're going. And that's always important for me to think about is not just what's the most pressing issue today, but what have we learned from the past? What mistakes have we made? What successes have we had? What can we learn from that moving into the future? And this time in which we are sheltering in place, many of us, and 
We have face a pandemic, the likes of which the world hasn't seen in a century. We might think that it's an entirely unprecedented time, but there are lessons we can learn from our past. There are smart decisions we can make about moving into the future. And we can take some risks and do some things differently than we did in the past, either because we're forced to, i.e. we can't meet in person, or because we choose to. We choose to embrace new technologies and new ways of living so that we can have a healthy, wonderful earth for many years to come, which is a problem facing us very directly right now, and so that our community can continue to be strong for decades to come. So I'm gonna wear this stole. I'll put it back on in a second once I'm off camera because it's a little awkward with the headphones and everything. Um, but I'll put it back on and I'm gonna wear it all this service and it helps me to ground me in the past and, and, and think about the future of where we are to come. So thank you so much for your attention and I'll hand it back to Katie. Thank you, Christian. If we were having worship service in person, this is the time we would pass the basket. This church shares the proceeds of the offering plate donation every week to support important nonprofit organizations with which we work. We have extended sharing half your non pledge donations with the Pride Community Center until the end of August. The Pride Community Center is a 501c3 nonprofit organization that seeks to build community provide resources and services, and offer education and outreach for the LGBTQ community in the Brazos Valley. If you wish to make an offering, you can mail your check, or for your convenience, you can donate online on our website. May each of us look into our hearts, how much love, how much generosity, how much faith, how much gratitude, how much hope is there? You can donate now at the link shown in the chat box. We give thanks for these gifts which have been given for those we receive and for each other. <laughs> Today's reading is a poem called Pandemic, which you may have heard of. It got quite a bit of uh, notoriety just a few months ago. It's by my colleague, the UU minister, Lynn Unger. She writes, what if you thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath, the most sacred of times? Cease from travel, cease from buying and selling, give up just for now, on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life, center down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You could hardly deny it now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has become clear. Do not reach out your hands, reach out your heart, reach out your words, reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love for better or worse in sickness and in health, as long as we all shall live. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a soul like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. 
was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve I once the precious that grace appeared the hour I first believed though many dangers toil and snares I have already come tis grace that brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home. Thank you so much, Joe, for that lovely rendition of Amazing Grains. So welcome friends, or uh, I hope to accept your welcome as I rejoin this community for the first time in a while. Um, as many of you know, and as I've already said today, this is in many ways a return home for me to the community where I became fully a Unitarian Universalist. Though I had attended some UU churches before, this was the first place where I became a member, um, where I dived in fully, where I did so many things and where I heard the call to ministry that ultimately took me away. Uh, I confess that I had never expected to serve this, my home church, uh, as minister. Um, the odds seem long. There's a thousand UU churches, for one thing. Um, and there are concerns to have about serving the place that has known you as a congregant. Will they ever really see me as the minister, too? But then again, this has been very much a year of the unexpected and of things we uh, used to see one way and now see a different way. I never expected to live through, much less minister during a pandemic. There's been no disruption of the world on this scale because of a disease in more than a century. Who could have expected it? Well, those of us who did expect it, those few have been telling us and warning us for years, but most of us couldn't listen. But I wanna ask you to take a moment just now and think. Think back to six or so months ago, to the lives we had and how they're different now. Think about some of the changes in your life and the lives of those around you, perhaps some of those we've lost to this disease or to others. Think about all the changes. And think too about how we've adjusted to this new reality, how quickly I went to a shop recently to get some groceries, some household items, and it, it struck me quite fully how strange it was to be walking around a place where virtually everyone was wearing masks, when a few months ago that would have seemed very strange to me. Now here at least, and in many places, it's the norm. At the very least, it should be the norm for all of us. I think about these changes and how we've adapted so quickly, how quickly humans adapt to all sorts of changes, whether we want them or not, and how we're going to adapt to the next changes, because I fear this is only the beginning of the changes. Even once we get the virus under control, there will be the rebuilding, the building a new future, still with many issues to deal with, climate change, our political issues, the continuing forms of oppression in our country and around the world that we have only begun to wrestle with. 
But let me tell you a little bit about me too, because this is my first service with you. As I grew up in Austin, Texas, my father still lives there. My mother sadly died several years ago, quite suddenly. Though my mother had grown up in a Unitarian church and my parents were married in one, we didn't attend church when I was growing up. My main experience of religious community was going to other people's churches, mostly to sing in their choirs, frankly, because they can always use an extra tenor or baritone. I went off to college at the University of Houston, where I started working for the student newspaper, which ultimately led to my first career working for daily newspapers first for a small daily in Natchez, Mississippi, and then here in Bryan College Station where I joined this church. I joined it quite quickly. It's not something I recommend for everyone, but it worked for me. I remember my uh, first trip there, in fact, Sharon Boston, who I see here today, met me at the door. I don't think she was expecting a visitor at 5.30 on what was a Friday or something, but she graciously showed me around and let me know everything she could about the church. It seems so long ago, that decade, but also it seems so long ago, just a few months ago. It's funny how time works. In fact, I speak in our household, our family speaks, and maybe you do too, somewhat jokingly of the before times, you know, February, way, way back when back before my kids were suddenly home all the time, back when working from home went from occasional luxury to constant absolute necessity, back before even a trip to the grocery store seemed like a scary prospect, back before I was terrified that I might accidentally catch a virus and give it to someone I love and kill them. We've adapted so quickly and will continue to adapt. For churches, for all religious communities, just about, it meant a huge and abrupt change too. In my last congregation in Berkeley, California, it meant going from nearly all our activities being in person on the church campus to within days, suddenly all of them being in online spaces. I imagine the change here was similarly abrupt. And that forces us to ask and at least try to answer many questions. One of them is, what does religious community look like online? We've begun to answer those questions. What does it mean to be a member of a local church when there is no local physical place to gather right now? For me, what does it mean to be your minister remotely? Some of those answers are simple. All of us doing ministry right now are doing it remotely, whether it's from the living room a couple miles away from a member or much, much farther. We're learning even more the importance of the phone and the internet and texting, of writing actual physical letters and cards. We're using all of these new and old technologies to stay connected and to do our work, the work of ministry and of church. Some of the leaders in this congregation and I are talking about some of the places where this might be difficult for me. If a member is in the hospital, how will we visit them? With the added complication that visiting in hospitals and retirement homes and other such facilities is either greatly limited or altogether not off the table right now. And of course, there are more mundane but also important questions. How do we pay the bills? How do we collect money from our members to keep doing what we're doing? How do we choose whether to do worship live like this or pre-recorded as many congregations are doing? Which services and programs will we use to meet and do this? There's Zoom and Google Meet and YouTube and Facebook and the list goes on. All of these questions matter and we have partial answers to at least all of them. And none of them are as important as how do we form community? because all of the ways we gather and share and learn and worship are technologies. Papers of technology, microphones in our sanctuary are technology, buildings are a technology, virtual worship is a technology. All of these are tools ultimately that help us to form community, to live out our values and ideals. 
Some of them may be better or worse for our particular context, but all of them are simply tools for a greater purpose. The Unitarian minister Theodore Parker gave a very famous sermon about 180 years ago in which he spoke about the transient and the permanent in the Unitarian Christianity then of his time. His point, if I can boil a 45 minute or so sermon down to a few sentences, was that there are some things which are always true and are really matter, really matter. And there are some things which come and go, and while they're important, especially in the moment, are ultimately not essential. To apply that to today, we might say that the way we gather has changed dramatically these last months, but the reasons we gather have not. Whether we're physically present in the same room or present only in the same space online, we're still called to build the beloved community, still called to be with one another in love, still called to transform our aching world towards health and wholeness. Now, I firmly believe that there's no going back, even when we can once again gather in person, hopefully in the new wonderful building we're in the process of making. We can't go back to just the way things are. This forced change to using virtual and online methods has shown us that they can have powerful and far reaching effects in our community and in the world. And we have to continue to incorporate and use those. How we do that is the question we have to ask. But I say this, there's no going back. We have to use all the technologies we can to do the best job we can. That's gathering in person, that's using online technologies to share with people both near and far, that's using the accessibility that these technologies afford us to reach people who may never come through our doors but are nevertheless committed members of our community and are part of making the beloved community happen. I'm looking forward to having those discussions and to all the discussions that will lead towards getting this community a wonderful settled minister in the future. That my friends is my real job as interim minister is to help this congregation move into a new era it's particularly stark that this new era will involve a new location, a new context, many, many new things for this congregation. So in this year, we'll be working on interim tasks. I'll tell you a whole lot more about what those tasks are in coming weeks, but they include things like discerning and affirming who the congregation is. We probably have a strong idea of that, or rather, we may have several strong and perhaps conflicting ideas of who that is, and we should talk about that reality. We'll talk about where the congregation is going, both physically, virtually, and metaphorically, and what we're called to do into the future. Again, a large conversation for us all to have. So friends, mostly what I wanna tell you today is that I'm so excited about doing this work with you, I'm excited about trying a new form of ministry that we're bravely stepping out to be a part of. I'm excited about doing the same important ministry together in all the newest ways. So may it be so, may we all be a part of it. And I look forward to speaking or texting or emailing or whatever with each and every one of you in weeks to come. Feel free to reach out to me via email or phone. I'm available and I want to meet all of you. And fortunately, it's a small enough congregation that that's a reasonable goal for me in the next few weeks. I'm excited to touch base with those of you I haven't spoken to in a long time and those of you who I've never spoken to. Um, please know that I'm available and um, I wanna get to know you. I hope you want to get to know me too as we embark on this important work um, over this coming year. And Pam has helpfully provided my email once again in the chat box. You can use that um, and we'll set up a, an appointment for a Zoom meeting, phone call, whatever, all the newest technologies to do all the wonderful ministry. May it be so.
Where is our holy church? Where race and class unite As equal persons in the search For beauty, truth, and right Where is our holy faith? Wherever a human heart A sacred torch of truth Has lit by inspiration taught where is our Holy One, a mighty host we spawn? The people rise in every land to break the captive's bond. Where is our Holy Land, within the human soul? Wherever free minds truly seek with character the goal. Where is our paradise in aspiration sight? Wherein we hope to see a rise ten thousand years of life. Please join me in extinguishing the chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we gather together again. How good it is to be together and to be with you. Even in the midst of this pandemic, we connect in, sir, in spirit rather for support and celebration, for growth and for learning. May each of us strive to make more connections through all the latest technologies in the days to come. Our worship has ended and our service begins. Mm -hmm.